Let us start with Ross, putting it at C tier. I've only done it a couple times. Marshalls uh, could fit in this same category as well. If you go to Ross, shop the clearance section and look for the big sizes. I've found a couple of like two, three XL new tags, Ralph Lauren polos. I found Salt Life one time. I just don't do it that much anymore. RA is a little tougher in my experience than thrifting. Although the prices can be comparable, I found shirts for like six, seven bucks and those were good flips. For the most part, it's gonna be straight up misses. A lot of people do shoes. I don't know how lucrative that is anymore. I'm sure there's still an opportunity there. I'm not an expert, putting it at C tier. SW Vendor stands for Sidewalk Vendors. You may have this where you live. When I lived in LA, this would happen a lot. People would go to thrift stores or the bins, uh, which is Goodwill Outlets, if you don't know what the bins is, and they would snatch up a whole big gob of clothing and then they would sell it on the sidewalks, on street corners for cheap prices you could kind of negotiate with them a little bit and uh i found some great stuff it's basically like going to the bins except a little pricier or going to it's like a midpoint or at least it was in my experience between the bins and a retail thrift environment and i did pretty well with it i'm gonna put it at b tier the only thing is it's really locally specific so if you don't have these people where you live then this is obviously not relevant to you and also their inventories are fairly small. If you find a, an area where they congregate, like in LA, I think it was, it was somewhere in Los Feliz, there was this whole avenue, this long street where they would all accumulate. Those can be great. Similarly, garage sales, I'm gonna put it B tier. Uh, pretty similar to the sidewalk vendors, although you stand to make bigger profits. I think garage sales, if there was a midpoint between B and A, it's B.5. Garage sales are better for hard goods than they are for clothing, but when they're good for clothing, they're really good for clothing. You have to get lucky. You have to go to a number of garage sales to find the big jackpot. You'll find someone who's like a skater or has a lot of vintage clothing that they're dumping. It's their personal collection and you can have a big windfall. I've done that before and I don't source that many shoes anymore, but garage sales were great for me for shoes. For the most part, it's just gonna be garbage. Although sometimes people just wanna get rid of it so you can haggle pretty aggressively if you're inclined to do so, or they'll just give you the stuff for free. And a lot of garage sales will have an area where they just are trying to get rid of the stuff for free. Um, one trick is if they know that you're really into clothing, they may not have been all that liberal with what they picked out of their own collection to put out for sale. So if you tell them that you're looking for clothing, especially if you're looking for a specific kind, they may go into the house and pull more stuff out for you. And of course that trick works with a bunch of other stuff too. Plato's Closet is, uh, I'm gonna be generous and put it at C tier, although my heart tells me to put it at D. I haven't tried to source there all that much. And this is a kind of a buy sell trade shop that's uh, it's a big chain. It's all over the country, I think. And a lot of people flip to them and I've heard of people sourcing from them. I think it's a little bit of a hard. I'm going to put it at D tier. I think it's harder than Ross and I haven't done it that much. So this is kind of an armchair opinion, but I've flipped through the inventory a few times when I'm there and I've never found anything once. That might just be my bad luck, but Plato's Closet will be priced above even the pricier retail thrifts, so 10, 12 bucks for a shirt. But they have a better eye, typically, than a lot of thrift stores, even the bigger chains. So the stuff that is worth money isn't gonna slip through their fingers as much as it will in a thrift store. Not to say that you can't find something. And again, I hear that it's good for sneakers, but I just don't even bother sourcing at Plato's Closet anymore. I, I step foot in one maybe once a year. Flea stands for flea markets. We call them swap meets where I live, but I know that that's not the common nomenclature. Flea markets are great and they're really underrated for clothing. Most people that go to flea markets, even most resellers that go to flea markets are not there for the clothing with the exception of the vintage hounds. Some flea markets have special vintage days or they have vintage vendors who are selling to these younger people who are looking for the vintage stuff. Especially if they have like five, $10 racks, you can find some decent stuff with some decent margin at the vintage places. But the, the real money is the big mountains of cast off clothing. You could get incredible deals. You can get like four for a buck pieces of clothing. You can get a buck a piece. Some vendors are gonna be a little greedier with their pricing. 
I don't say that pejoratively. I just mean that they will price higher. Those people, you can still find deals, but the real money is in the people who are underpricing their clothing. And a lot of the times, people will just get a whole bunch of clothes out of a storage unit or something and they'll put it all out. And if it's the right person's storage unit, you can find really valuable stuff. I had a total, total gold mine moment where I lucked into like a dollar sale on a big pile of vintage clothing, a lot of Christian Dior silk and stuff that I sent into the real real. I made some great money. You cannot rely on that happening, but you can rely on finding consistently really dirt cheap clothing at flea markets and you won't have as much competition there. F and F stands for friends and family. I'm putting it at A tier. This is also synonymous with just sourcing out of your own closet. This is what's advocated for typically brand new resellers. Um, I think that piece of advice is decent, but it's a little bit overstated. I think if you're just cutting your teeth on clothing reselling, you don't have to sandbox yourself and only sell stuff that you already have. Like you, it, it behooves you to start getting a little bit of dirt under your fingernails in terms of going out and actually taking the risks and learning the ropes of buying with the intention of reselling. That's the real skill. But if you just wanna get your feet wet at the very, very beginning, totally a good thing to do just to source stuff from yourself or people that you know. And I still source this way as it becomes available to me. Like my neighbors, I have great neighbors, next door neighbors, and they give me stuff all the time because they're always re-donating uh, old you know, stuff from their closet. They just brought me like three boxes of books that they don't want anymore. They've given me boxes of clothes, some of it new with tags. So if you have friends in your life or family members or neighbors or just people around you that that know that you're a reseller if you ask them to donate to you instead of to goodwill and um you don't need to feel bad about asking that goodwill has plenty of inventory then um that can be a great resource and of course it's free so it's 100 percent uh profit margin and you may end up getting some some good stuff and people may ask you to cut them in on a commission and that's perfectly fine to do do whatever you're comfortable with Offer up and let go. I'm gonna put it B tier. You could swap in also Facebook Marketplace, local, Craigslist. And now that I think of it, there's a few sites where people will put up stuff for free that they don't want anymore. They'll post like a classified ad for free stuff. Uh, offer up, these kinds of things I use to find garbage bags of free clothing or really dirt cheap clothing. Sometimes I have sourced local stuff like vintage denim. I don't do it that much or really at all anymore just because I've kind of dialed in my sourcing locally. I can get stuff for cheap. I don't feel that I have to do this. I do have videos on the channel where I run this experiment of getting bags of free stuff. You can also ask thrift stores if they're backlogged on inventory, if you can have some of their unsorted inventory, you can offer to pay a lump sum or something. If they like you, they might play ball. Goodwill is not gonna do this, but the local mom and pop thrifts might. I volunteered at a thrift store that was fairly small and their stock room got totally overwhelmed. It was just a mountain of clothing. It took days, days, days to get it all sorted out. So they may be more than happy to offload some of that stuff to you if you ask nicely. Um, but people will post listings for whole bags full of free stuff that they just want to get rid of. And it's not just clothing, it's other stuff too. So I would set an alert. I use OfferUp. I've never let, used let go, but on OfferUp, I know that you can set alerts for certain keywords that are in the listings. Uh, I would set one for curb alert, set one for free, free clothes, whatever is relevant to the niche that you sell in. And uh, it's good to refresh frequently if you're gonna do this because the competition will be fierce. I basically wound up getting lucky a few times and that I caught the listings, they were close by enough that I could zip over in my van and grab it before anybody else could get to it. Because most of the time they're not gonna respond to messages, they're just gonna say, it's out on the curb at this address, come get it, don't communicate with me. So you have to be on the ball and you can find some pretty decent stuff. You do find trash and whatnot. It's uh, it's a little gross, so wear gloves maybe, but um, you can you can make money doing that. And because it is free, I'm putting it at B tier. Poshmark arbitrage. I'm gonna say C tier. And you could also say eBay or Macari arbitrage or any kind of online reselling platform arbitrage. I'm just gonna use Poshmark as shorthand for this from now on. 
this just means you go on Poshmark, find stuff that's underpriced, buy it. It gets sent to you. You list it on your own uh, closet, in your own closet, or on your own eBay store, and you resell it back online. And there are people who make a full-time living doing this. It's not my specialty. I've done it before. Before this channel got popular, relatively popular, certainly to where it was, I was putting out a couple of videos about doing this. And I did manage to make a few money. A few money. I made a few of money. Sniping items that people didn't really know they had. Um, or they didn't know the value of it. Like I got this really rare pair of Adidas sneakers that were Star Wars special R2-D2 C-3PO sneakers and I flipped them for 300 bucks. I got them for 50 or 60 I think and the trick to doing this in my experience was finding the right closet to make a bundle from. So find someone who happens to have good stuff who doesn't uh, e either doesn't really know what it's worth or has undervalued what it's worth and bundle it all together and then get a further discount on it and it'll all get sent to you all in one go. I had spotty luck doing this. There was the big win. The sneakers were a good example. There were a couple other fairly decent uh, wins, but there were also a bunch of losses, stuff that ended up not flipping, which is really just user error on my end. And also you befall a lot of flaws. Um, I would say the flaw rate is actually almost equivalent to when you source at the bins. These resellers... the. The resellers that have the stuff that's undervalued are not the ones that are really diligent about screening. They're not professional resellers. Upscale consignment shops, I'm gonna put at D tier. I've only attempted this once or maybe twice. Uh, I know that there are people who do this consistently. It takes a lot of specialist knowledge and you're probably gonna need to be a women's clothing reseller to make this work because the majority of upscale consignment shops are geared towards women. So this is almost more akin to flipping cell phones or electronics or something. You're spending maybe like 30 to uh, 200 odd dollars on a single piece and then flipping it to make a decent margin. So you buy something for 50 bucks, you sell it for 100, you end up netting, you know, what, like 30 bucks or something. You really have to know what you're doing and you have to be willing to stomach the risk and the consignment shops are not all that likely to dramatically underprice their own inventory because these are also specialists who know how to price and they know what they're looking at. In fact, this is getting demoted to E tier. Small thrifts. By small thrifts, I mean obviously smaller mom and pop. Maybe they only have one location thrift stores. I also mean smaller relative to the big players and more local thrift stores that are chains that maybe have two to five locations in your city but aren't these big national chains. I like them a lot. I'm going to put them at B tier. It's hard to put all of these places into one bucket category because they will vary from shop to shop and chain to chain. In general though, they will be more favorable to you than some of the bigger players. In fact, let's bump this up to A tier because here's the thing. Some of them, like the little church shops, will dramatically overprice certain things arbitrarily just because they happen to recognize the name David Taylor or like ping golf clothing. They think golf clothes is worth money, so therefore it's all priced 25 bucks. The literacy in terms of the niche specialty brands that I really love is very low, is dramatically lower than at most of the big chains. So you can find slip ups much more easily there. Also the clientele who are donating to these places tend to have a little bit more money or at least around uh, the, the parts of town where I thrift. The smaller chains tend to not price quite as aggressively and they also are more liable where I live to run sales. I really don't have anything negative to say about them. I wish there were still more of them around. A bunch of them shuttered around where I live because of COVID. Same is probably true of you, where you live. Um, but get intimately familiar with these kinds of thrift stores locally. And these are the places where it can be really valuable to establish some kind of a relationship with the employees or the manager. Because if they like you, they are much more uh, liable to do you favors and they have a lot more leeway to do favors. Buffalo Exchange is a buy sell trade chain that is at least all over the West Coast it might be a West Coast 
Yeah, I'm going to put it at C tier. And there are a lot of buy sell trade shops like Buffalo Exchange that operate as it does and serves the buyer base that it does, which is people really under the age of like 25. It's much more youth oriented. I guess a lot of what I'm going to say for Buffalo Exchange could also go for Plato's Closet. I just have more, way more experience with Buffalo Exchange than I do with Plato's Closet or, or any of the other buy sell trade places. One, you can flip to them for credit. So you can go, if you get like a bunch of stuff for really cheap, maybe it has a few little flaws and you don't want to take the time to list it online. If you take it into a Buffalo Exchange and flip it for credit, they will give you a much more generous cut than if you flip for cash. Where I am, I think it's 40% versus 20 or 25% credit versus cash. So you can build up a big bank of credit and then use that to purchase a little bit higher dollar items than maybe you would have sourced if you were just paying out of pocket. So you're paying with time to get a little bit of an advantage. And you can find really good stuff, or at least I can where I live. You can find really nice dress shoes, you can find graphic t-shirts, maybe vintage t-shirts. Believe it or not, I have found some, some pretty dramatically underpriced vintage t-shirts. Not in a while, more when I was just shopping for myself when I was in my 20s. But I found like this vintage Rammstein t-shirt before I was even a reseller. So maybe this doesn't apply anymore, but this just stands out in my memory. There was this, the Burning Man, the, the Man on Fire Rammstein t-shirt, which is super rare. They only had it priced at like nine bucks. I should have picked it up. It was a 2XL, which of course is like the best size to find in vintage t-shirts. That thing is worth over 200 bucks. That's a good bolo, Rammstein t-shirts are excellent. And it's also, or was the world's best band. Last two albums, maybe not so much. Um, anyway, you can find mistakes at Buffalo Exchange, especially stuff that's not maybe intended for people in their teens and 20s. More, you know, formal suit jackets, stuff like that, dress shoes. And you can uh, do some decent arbitrage. The prices are gonna be higher than at thrift stores, but you can find some good opportunities. All right, getting into the big boys, savers is also Value Village. They're owned by the same company. I, they don't have a big presence here where I live in San Diego, but you probably have them somewhere around where you live. I have one that's quite a long drive. I've been there a couple of times. I'm gonna put it at C, which is pretty low down on the list. They're my least favorite. They're the most overpriced in my experience. Yeah, I just don't have that much experience with them, but I've found it difficult to source from there. Salvation Army, I like a lot. I personally get the impression that it's a little bit of a better organization than Goodwill that allocates more of their money to actual charity. That's not a very well studied opinion, so that could be wrong. But I, I, I'm i more fond of the company than I am of Goodwill. I wish that I had more of them around. There's only two or th I think three in San Diego that I'm aware of. It's a relatively smaller chain than Goodwill, which is the big monolith company, uh, but they run sales. And of course these policies are not necessarily gonna be the same where you are, um, but where I am, I'm speaking only from my own experience here, Salvation Army is much more generous with their discounts and that they offer them at all. Goodwills, no discounts ever, no sales ever, and they don't give out coupons, and Salvation Army does all three. That leaves us with Goodwill, which I must put at S tier. I have to do it, even though it kind of galls me to do it, because Goodwill frequently pisses me off for all of the reasons that Goodwill pisses people off. They're ubiquitous, they get the best inventory, and they have bins. They offer bins. Salvation Army does too, but not where I live. Most of the bins in the country are run by Goodwill. And the Goodwill bins are among the very best sourcing opportunities available to clothing sellers. In terms of uh, cost of goods, you really can't do better unless, you can't do consistently better. There are things on this list that will allow you to get clothing for cheaper than at the bins, such as OfferUp, such as flea markets, friends and family. But nothing is as consistently cheap as the Goodwill bins. So if you're a new clothing reseller, that is a great place to cut your teeth. It should be a part of your diet if you have it available to you, even if you don't focus on it primarily as your sourcing strategy, it's a great resource to have on hand. The competition is fierce. It, it can be a little weird and gross 
every once in a while your hand will touch something wet, which we all love. Retail Goodwills, I also have to put this high on the list because the inventories are so huge and because the inventory is so good. Most people donate to Goodwill. Goodwill has done a very good job of positioning itself as the most convenient drop-off location for donated goods of all kinds. They have locations all over most major cities and minor ones too. They have drop-off locations that are just geared specifically to for you to be able to drive up in your car, unload a bunch of stuff into a storage container and drive off and get your tax write-off receipt. So most people donate their stuff to Goodwill. I would say probably 70% of the really great high dollar clothing items that I've ever found as a reseller came from Goodwills. A lot of that was when I lived in LA and they would make an announcement on the PA system that they were bringing new inventory out and it was fiercely competitive. It was like bears ripping apart salmon. I mean, it was, uh, I almost got into multiple fist fights when I lived up there because the competition was so extreme. I've got a little taste of that locally recently, but if you have that where you live, take advantage of it and learn how to throw elbows in the thrift and be really competitive because that is where you will find the Arcturix, the Patagonia, the Snua Tags, the designer clothing. Short of that, you're still gonna find better stuff at a Goodwill than you are really at anything else on this list, anywhere else. Short of consignment shops. If you go to upscale consignment shops, you will find better stuff maybe, but not for the prices that will allow you to flip it for the really big margins. Goodwill is also good for the bread and butter pieces, the $7 buys that you can turn into $25, $30 flips. Goodwill is going to be relatively consistently good for that if you can stomach the outlay of seven, eight, ten 10 bucks at a time for a single piece. One of the downsides of Goodwill is that they are brand savvy relative to a lot of these other thrift stores and it is tougher to catch mistakes from them. You still will catch mistakes. I catch plenty of underpriced items. There are other ways to source People buy wholesale lots, people buy mystery boxes. There are all sorts of other ways to source, but this is just what I do. And I really thrift. I'm a thrifter before all else. Um, so if you're struggling with the high prices at the thrift stores, there are these other alternatives available to you that I encourage you to explore, but also don't write off thrifting. Don't turn your nose up at it. And I hope that this helps. I hope this gives you a few ideas. This is, like I said, not all of the ideas, but this is the ones that occurred to me. So thanks for watching.